Hello, in this video I will explain how to create and use macro features. Macro feature is an element in the feature manager tree which supports parametric behavior, similar to any other standard feature in solvers, such as extrude, fillet, chamfer, etc. I will also explain the basic concept of parametric behavior of SOLIDWORKS features. I will create a multi-boss extrude feature which allows to extrude multiple sketches at the same time. I will be using this sample model for my demo and this is just a simple part document which has three sketches and those sketches are on different planes. As you may know, you cannot use different sketches to extrude them using the boss extrude feature. Now I am going to insert custom macro feature. As you can see, it shows the property manager page where I need to specify input parameters. I can select a sketch into the first box, tick a checkbox and specify the extrusion depth. I can activate second group and select different sketch now and specify a different lens, for example 50 mm. I can repeat this process for the last sketch. As you can see, preview is automatically updated as I change the parameters of my feature. Once finished, I click a green tick. And you can see there is a new feature appeared in my feature manager tree. This feature follows standard behavior as any other SOLIDWORKS feature. So it generated multiple bodies. I can also modify the sketch and it immediately updates the feature geometry. I can modify the sketch as well and you can see the geometry is updated. I can also modify the definition of this feature and for example exclude one of the sketches from its parameters and modify the depths. Once completed, the geometry is immediately updated. I can also use this feature in conjunction with any other standard feature of SOLIDWORKS. So for example, if I would apply a fillet to this feature, if I modify the geometry, the fillet will stay as well. Even if I go and edit the definition of that feature and change the depth, the fillet will properly rebuild. It is possible to do any other manipulations with that feature, such as suppressing, unsuppressing, and also removing that feature. Now let me give you a quick introduction of how parametric features work in SOLIDWORKS. All features in SOLIDWORKS are connected to each other in certain way. For example, when you have extrude feature, that feature has some parameters such as depth and it is also connected to certain sketch which is based on. Sketch itself also connected to some feature such as face or plane. That plane can also be connected to other feature and so on and so forth. When you modify the value of the depth of the extrude, that changes this node and feature is going to be regenerated. When any of the dependent feature changes, it also triggers the regeneration process. Even if our extrude feature is not directly related to plane, when plane changes, this would trigger the sketch regeneration, which itself will trigger the extrude feature regeneration. And this is a basic idea of how macro feature works in SOLIDWORKS. We will set sketches as apparent features of macro feature, so whenever sketch changes, macro feature is regenerated. Changing the parameters through the edit definition property manager page will also trigger regeneration process. Let's now explore and debug this macro to see how it works step by step. I have several classes and modules in this macro. First one is a property page class. This one contains the definition of our property manager page. But there is no logic implemented in this property page. It rather sends an event to our controller and controller will properly parse those. One of the things I want to point out is you need to assign unique marks to your selection boxes. So different objects can be selected in different selection boxes. Init page values routine set the initial values for the property manager page when feature is edited. When the property manager page is about to be closed, we use collect data function to grab all the selection and parameters and save them. Handle data changed event will be called every time our property manager page values are changed. For example, when new selection occurs, checkbox checked or we change the value of the depth. In this case, data changed event will be raised. It will be captured by controller to update the preview of our feature. Now let's open the controller class. This one going to create page and display it and will also handle the page closing event and will correspondingly either create or update this feature. I'm going to embed this macro feature directly into the file by using the SW macro feature embed macro file. This is the benefit of what VBA macro features have. As you can embed it directly to the file and the users of that file do not need to install any additional software to use that macro feature. 
Follow the link in the description of this video to download this file and try it from your end. In contrast to VBA macro features, COM-based macro features do need COM objects to be registered on target machine in order to use macro feature. However, COM-based macro features enables you to use more sophisticated language such as c VB.NET or C++. This will make the development process much easier and your feature will be much more stable. I would recommend to use COM-based macro features where possible and only use VBA macro features when there is a strong need to do so. I will show how to implement this feature as a COM-based macro feature using xcat.net framework in the next video. This is a free framework and it will greatly simplify the development of that feature. So I will be able to write it from scratch and there will be more options in that feature so you'll be able to use dimensions, icons, etc. Let's continue exploring this macro. Geometry module contains some helper functions to create extrudes from our sketches. Those functions will be called from the controller to generate our preview and geometry. Macro feature module implements the behavior of our macro feature. It contains three main functions. SWM rebuild and these functions get called every time our feature needs regeneration. This function will return the geometry of our macro feature. SWM edit definition function is going to be called every time user clicks on edit definition for this feature in the feature manager tree. We will roll back this feature and show the property manager page to update its parameters. SWM security function is going to be called every time our feature state is changed. For example, when user tries to edit that feature, select this feature, etc. This function can be used to assign additional restrictions to that feature. For example, you can forbid deleting or suppressing this feature based on certain condition. Let's now go ahead and debug this feature. I'm going to activate the entry point and simply click run to start the macro. The macro will check the condition and initiate the page and also call the insert extrude to show our the insert page for inserting that macro feature. I'm going to add several breakpoints. So I just want to put the breakpoint within the data changed event and this one is going to be called every time we change the parameters from our property manager page. So if I select a sketch, you can see this event has been hit and it's trying to firstly hide preview where we don't have any preview and also tries to create a new preview and also we don't have all the conditions met so preview is not created. Now we have all of our checkboxes checked so we can create a preview for this particular element. So you can see we're calling the create bodies from sketches from geometry class and it's actually going to pass the parameters from our macro feature and this function going to return us the temporary bodies which we can display in our macro feature preview. So you can see those bodies are displayed. So if you change the parameters, it's going to call that method again. Firstly, we're going to hide existing preview. So you can see it's no longer empty. To hide the preview of 10 bodies, we just need to set their pointer to nothing. And you can see that our preview has been updated. We can activate second group and do the same. So I'm just going to select another sketch and specify the parameter of depth. Now we can click a green tick and our page closed event has been hit. Firstly, I'm just going to hide the preview. I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to insert macro feature. So here I'm just going to collect my parameters, present that to the macro feature and called insert macro feature 3 API from feature manager interface. When feature is inserted, it's going to call SWM rebuild to generate the geometry. So let's put a breakpoint and continue the macro. So you can see that method has been hit and now we can just extract the parameters from the macro feature such as selection and depth and also call the same create bodies from sketches method from geometry class to generate our bodies. In order to preserve compatibility with other features, it is required to assign unique IDs to all faces and edges for that body. Once it is done, we can now return those bodies from that function. And those bodies now being served in the feature manager tree and they belong to that macro feature. Changing the sketch will trigger a build function to be called again where we need to regenerate the feature with new parameters. This function will also be called when you click Ctrl Q to regenerate your model. Let me now put a breakpoint on edit definition function and see how it works. So to trigger that function I need to go to right mouse button edit feature 
and here I'm just simply creating the instance of the controller and passing the feature to edit extrude function of the controller. In order to edit the definition of the feature, we first need to roll it back using the access selection method. As you can see, this feature has been rolled back in the tree. We can now safely access all the parameters and selections from that macro feature. So I will simply pass those parameters into the show method and it's going to call init page values to set our initial values to property manager page. In order to set the selection, I simply need to select all those objects with the corresponding marks. And I also assign the depth to each individual number box in the property manager page. So now as you can see our values and selections have been restored in the property manager page, so we can just modify the values if we want to. Click green tick and now we're going to hide the preview and modify macro feature by calling the corresponding function. We're going to use set parameters to set our new parameters and also set selections to update the selection for our macro feature. After we modify the definition, it's going to trigger the rebuild function again we're going to reevaluate our bodies. This completes this video. Please follow the link in the description of this video for more information and use cases for macro feature. You can also find the link to download the macro and the model used in this demo. Thank you for your time.